Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Kim with Stone Cell Homestead. Not sure quite what I'm doing, but I think I've made my decision. I believe we are going to jar up some tomato soup today. I'm going to cook these tomatoes down. We're gonna get that process started. Um, didn't think you needed to see me clean the tomatoes and cut them up, but we're gonna get started and hopefully I'll have a full stock pot full and we'll get some tomato juice going for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And I'm gonna bring you along and hope we have an amazing day and hope you have an amazing day as, as well. So thanks for joining and let's get started. And so now I've added about three quarters of a cup of onion to my tomatoes. I'm gonna cook that down and once everything's cooked down, we'll blend it together and start making the soup. Okay, so we've got our tomatoes all cooked down here and now I need to add all of the spices. So tomatoes and onions, those were already cooked down, they're blended. It calls for brown sugar. I'm not adding that as much as they call for it. I, I'm not real fond of it. Um, in my tomato soup, I like that little bit more tang of tomato soup. So I'm just going to add um, the spices here and a little bit of the tomato or the brown sugar. I need two tablespoons of dried oregano for one batch. This is actually a double batch. So I have 15 pounds of tomatoes. There's one tablespoon of oregano, two tablespoons of oregano. The next thing I will be adding is basil. It doesn't say between sweet basil or regular basil. I don't know if it matters. I'm just gonna add my sweet basil and it calls for two teaspoons of dried basil. Of course, feel free to use your fresh seasonings if you would like. I'm just using dry because that's what I have on hand. I do have basil, but I have neglected it and um, it hasn't been dried yet. So I'm just gonna do this. It also asks for two bay leaves. I will get to that. I need a teaspoon of celery seed. So doubling that would be two teaspoons of celery, celery seed. So the need a half a teaspoon of black pepper. It calls for a half a teaspoon, so that would be one teaspoon of black pepper because I am doubling it. I need one and a half teaspoons of salt. Of course, I'm adding my favorite, Redmond's Real Salt, and one and a half teaspoons. Doubled would be one tablespoon. And my two basil leaves, let me grab those. Or not basil leaves, bay leaves, sorry, bay leaves. Two of those. And of course, I'll remember to take those out when I can it. But that's a big one. Wow. Throw that in there. So let's see if I got everything in there. It appears that I do. Oh, garlic, I need my garlic. Let me grab my garlic. And it says two teaspoons of granulated garlic. 
I don't have granulated garlic, garlic so I'm using minced garlic. Again, that'll work just fine. And we love our garlic, so I'm not I'm not skimping on my four teaspoons of garlic. And now I'm gonna cook this down a little bit. I'm gonna give this a good stir. There we go, using my wet, wet stone wooden ware. Give that a good stir. And I just need to bring all this to a simmer and I'm gonna cook it until it's reduced to the thickness that I would like my tomato soup to be. So I'm just gonna let this cook and simmer and I'll bring you back when it's ready to jar. We've got the tomato soup ready to go. Now I need to add a tablespoon of lemon juice or citric acid, depending on what you use. I'm using lemon juice, um, but I'm going to be adding a tablespoon to each jar. And I'm just gonna use the store-bought kind. And there again, you can use whatever kind you want. I just use this kind for canning. I do have my um, organic from Azure Standard that I absolutely love and I do use that as well. Some people are all concerned about the acidity in your lemon juice. You know, it's, it's real lemon juice, I just use it. Whether it's from Azure or from store-bought, to me it's all the same, but you do you, do your research, figure it out, but here we go. I'm going to use my two cup measuring cup from Azure Standard. My jars have been washed and cleaned, so they're good. My lids are sitting over here in hot water just waiting to be letting these jars half inch head space I'm and I'm watching for my bay leaves as I pour it into the jars here because I haven't pulled them out yet my water bath canner is behind me. It is warming up as we speak. So when I put these hot jars in it, that water will also be hot. I'm hoping to get nine pints of tomato soup. And this has more of an Italian um, note to it rather than a tomato-y. It, it's going to definitely have a um, basil tomato soup, if you will, because I, I added that basil and that oregano. But we just absolutely love this. And there again, Marlon and I can take it to work right in the jar, warm it up in the microwave. Road trips are, are great. I had a subscriber say that she was going to make one of my soups that I did and use it for a road trip. So I appreciate that, all the comments and, and suggestions that I get. I really, I really appreciate all of all of all of you that's we're each in this together. We're, we're watching, we're, we're learning, we're trying to learn new skill sets. And, and that's what I want each of you to do is, is just work on, 
on your skill set and learn new things. This year I have learned to do sourdough, which was something I had never I had never done before and I have really worked on that to get that skill set down. I've got a little bit too much here in a couple of these jars, so I'm going to add I think I had lemon juice in that, so I'm gonna have to add lemon juice into this one. Just gotta get some out of these. I don't want these too full. The head space is there for a reason. It's there so that when you can it, whether it be pressure can or water bath can, that it has the proper head space to push out that air space to push out that water or no not the water push out the air space so that it seals properly so i'm going to add my lemon juice to this one add it to my other jars it looks like there is a good chance i'm going to have exactly a little nine jars So what other soups do you all like to can? I am really looking for suggestions because I want to get shelf stable meals ready on the pantry shelf or in my in my long-term storage for my jars for my canning. So that when I can't think of anything to take to work, I can run down and just grab it off my shelf and head to work have a nice, hot, comforting meal at work. And I'm sure you all have some favorites you go to. So please share with me. I'm gonna finish canning these up and then we will get them jarred up. So as you can see, I'm gonna move you over just a little bit. There we go. I did get nine pints and this little bit left and I'm gonna eat that for my lunch right now. Look at this. I've got my vinegar here and we're going to wipe off the rims. See that we have a little bit too much in this one. Not quite enough in this one. So I'm just going to switch that around. Same with this one. I probably should be showing you the right way to do this. So let me grab my tool. Here is my tool here. I'm looking at a half inch right there. So I'm just gonna measure it so that I am showing you the right way to do this. And that bottom of that measure should come to the to the fluid to the to the product so i need a little bit more here in this one there we go and there's going to be a lot of tomato recipes that are going to be coming this next couple weeks because we are just really having an explosive tomato garden right now. And that's normal for this time of year in Northern Indiana. If I haven't ever told you, we live in Northern Indiana. And I am adding a couple little spoons here to get those correct. There we go. Now I can clean these rims off. I'm gonna take my vinegar and I'm just gonna wipe off any debris, anything that's on there. I don't want that to mess with my seal on my lids. Now many of you know I'm not affiliated with anybody so I am careful to say what kind of lids I am using and jars. I went to Ollie's and they had these pure jars. I have no problem with the pure mason jars. None at all. I also don't have problems with the pure canning lids. Since these lids came with these jars, that's exactly what I'm going to use. However, 
I am careful to say I do not use these pure lids in the pressure canner. I had a couple failures with some cheaper lids and so now I just stick to my four jars lids or my superb lids for my for my pressure canner. I, I just, I'm not willing to risk it. Just not willing to risk it at all. And I know you all know how I feel about that. So I'm gonna quickly debubble here with my trusty tool you've saw me use before. It is my Tupperware citrus peeler. Just making sure that there is no issues with that. Make sure I got the air bubbles out. There is jar lifter. Putting these lids on here. And this jar lifter has a magnet if you didn't know and these are quite the handy tool when you're when you're lidding your jars. I get it on Amazon. You can get it at grocery stores, canning supply stores, wherever. So but they're nice to have. And my measuring tool that you saw me use to measure my headspace, I got that from Amazon on Prime Day. They had a two pack. I gave one to my daughter-in-law. Okay, finger tight, that's it. We're gonna start setting these in over here in the canner while I'm putting the lids on. Finger tight. Do not over tighten you will be very unhappy. It will buckle the lids or blow them off the top. So make sure you don't over tighten, finger tight. I'm sure you've heard that on many other YouTube channels. And I just wanna share with you the Every Bit Counts Challenge that Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead is hosting. Please visit her channel. I will link all the other channels that I can find that are participating in the in the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Visit their channels, check their videos out. Um, I am nowhere near a professional. This is what I have just done. I started off as a hobby to have fun, I guess, if you will. And then as my children got older and the cost of food went up, I began canning pretty heavily. And now I can as much as I can. You will see that I do not follow all the rules to a T. I do what is good for me. You do what's good for you. Your kitchen, your rules. I have no problem with that. That leftover vinegar from washing the rims, from wiping the rims, I'm gonna pour in the water. That stops your mineral water, your water from building up mineral deposits on your jars. As you can see, I have dropped the jars now down in the pressure canner, or not the pressure canner, the water bath canner. I've been going between a lot of different things. Sorry about that. So I've dropped it in the water bath canner. Now once this water comes to a boil. Once the tomato soup and the, the water bath canner comes to a boil, I am going to water bath at a boil for 40 minutes. I don't like hard boil because it knocks jars against one another. I make sure that it is boiling continuously when I start the when I start that timer for this canner. So anyway, back to Every, Bit's cow, Every Bit Counts Challenge. Many, many channels that are taking part. I am just so blessed to be a part of this. We share our videos, we hashtag Every Bit Counts Challenge. So if you click on that hashtag on this video or any of the others, it'll take you to all the other videos and you get to see what everybody's doing in the month of August. 
and I hope to do one video at the very end of August to show you everything that I have processed. You're gonna see a lot of canning, a lot of water bath canning, a lot of pressure canning on my channel. Some freeze, some dehydrate, some freeze dry. Those all count as preservation methods. Anything you put in your pantry, in your on your shelf to use at a later date, or in your freezer, however you do it counts. Every bit counts challenge. So there are many ways of preservation. Take advantage of all of those videos, look at them, see if you can find new ideas for yourself. So I'm starting to have some bubble here. I'm starting to have some boil and I am going to bring that to a boil here. I'm gonna add my lid to my water bath canner, so that's gonna steam up a little bit, but it'll clear up here shortly. And then we'll start the timer. And as you can see, it's starting to boil. It's doing well. I've started my timer for 40 minutes and we'll see you when they're done. Nice boil, nice gentle boil. Okay, timer's off. I'm going to let this come down in temperature. I am gonna remove the lid to let that come down in temperature. And when it's come down to where I can slowly take the jars out, I will do that and I'll be back for that. Now I'm gonna lift these out with my jar lifter. Whoops, sorry about that. That's probably hard on the ears. going to leave these set over here to the side and let them cool down. They will sit here for 24 hours. To make sure they all seal and then within those 24 hours, if it does not seal, I still have a chance that if I run my canner again, that I can um, re-can them, re-water re bath them. Or I can stick it in the fridge and use it within a week. And there we go. There's my last one. There we go. I'm just gonna bring you over here. I try to keep them level, but as you can see, there's still water on top of them. I often take a towel and, and I just lightly, I don't push down, I just soak that water off because I don't wanna push it down to uh, mess with that seal. So we are done, nine pints for the Every Bit Counts Challenge today of tomato soup. I will link everything in the, in the description below. And again, thanks everyone for joining. And as always, be blessed and laugh as much as you breathe. Have a great day, everyone.